Good day. I'm Pierre Leveille, President and CEO of uh, Deep South Resources. I'm pleased to be with you again today. Pierre, good to see you. Um, I haven't seen you since, since uh, when did I see? September it was, I think. That was it. Um, now, I'm over here at uh, in Daba, in, in Cape Town, hence the background. Uh, you're not. You're, you should be, but you're not. Uh, well, what's happened? You haven't, you haven't made it over. I have a, a little uh, health issue. It's uh, I'm waiting for minor surgery, but uh, they, they have asked me to not travel between the early May and mid June. So as I'm I'm stuck at home. It's a, a little bit bad. I I did I think I didn't miss in Daba for the last twenty years. So it's very uh, very annoying. But I have you know some other people of our companies are there. Our VP Exploration, our chairman. So um, we're well represented, but. I'm not there. <laughs> good, good, good. Well, like you're missing some good weather, that, that's for sure. Um, look, I wanted to catch up with you because I've been mean, sort of looking through your press releases. You have been going after the Namibian Minister uh, of Ministry of Mines. Um, they have not delivered uh, for you, according to you. So, wh what's the update? Where are you with the, that um, with that case that's going on? The uh First, uh, let's go back in September, there was a court order to the ministry to deliver all documents pertaining to the, the way they, they have taken that decision. So email exchanges, uh, external reports, or uh, anything that could you know, support their decision. And they have never been able to deliver not whatsoever, not one piece of paper, nothing. And they were always late. They were always you know, asking extensions. So at some point in time, we arrived to a point where the judge said, okay, now enough, you file your defense. And then they did the same. They, uh, in in uh, February, they were late filing them their defense. In March, they were late filing their defense. In April also, they're late fi filing their defense. Um, we, uh, so they will certainly be sanctioned by the uh, by the judge because the the judge has warned the party warned the party uh, recently that uh, if it continues like this there would be sanctions so that's what we expect and uh, and it shows that if they don't have anything to support their decision and anything to defend themselves it seems that they have no case <laughs> it's that's it you know it's like uh, so we will certainly put pressure to have the judge move forward as soon as possible with this, uh, you know, with the final hearing where we will debate the case, even if they don't have a defense, that's their problem. Okay, so the last date they missed was April 29th, right? And they've missed, they've missed other dates too. Um, how long can this go on? At what point does a judge step in and say, right, if you are not prepared to submit anything, I will file for the defendant? The, uh, uh, we have a hearing on the May 18th, and that's probably where the judge will, will take some measures of that, of that nature. That, anyway, we will push to get that. Okay. So. Uh, okay. But it, 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 it could go on a little bit. Look, I'm not saying this is specific to Namibia. I've seen this all around the world, but this, this thing can drag out a bit. But what I'm trying to work out is what's the ultimate point at which the the Ministry of Mines and Energy for Namibia has no more options and they lose this or kind of drag on for months and years. We're, we're very near of that. Uh, the rule of the court makes that the judge is a little bit forced to you know, agree to extensions, a certain number of extensions, but there are some limits to that. And they, I, the last time they were very, they were at the limit. So now if they don't have a defense, if they don't have any documents supporting their, their, uh, their actions or their decision, what the judge can do on uh, May 18, he can decide we will go to the final hearing and debate the thing even if you don't have a defense, or I will stop the case immediately and render a judgment. That, that's two things that he can do, okay? Okay. I just so want to we're, near of, of, we're near of that. You're very close to that, right? But I, I, what, what I'm trying to work out in my head as an investor is like, how much of a punt is this? Like, you're, you're a sub mil, uh, $10 million company at the moment, right? And this is, this is all around timing in the market, ability to get capital and uh, be able to, you know, appease them in, in the sense that this project has been moving forward. And I, I, I've heard your case, uh, your defense before, so we don't need to go into that one. Your PEA. At today's prices, sorry, I'm going to use your PEA basis, but use today's prices. 
you're, you would probably be somewhere around a 40% IRR. You'd probably be somewhere around an 800 US dollar NPV 7.5 using today's prices. Okay. It's, it's a big, it's a sort of low grade, but big scale project, right? So it's going to be appealing. Do you feel that if you get the decision that you want soon, that you're going to be able to go to the market and say, right, uh, we, 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 we've got the piece of paper we need. The project looks good at today's prices and you will be able to substantially move this project on forward because not much has happened in the past few years. You'd, you'd have to admit. No, no, absolutely. And the, uh, I cannot say anything <laughs> against that. You know, for the last year, it was very quiet. Uh, the, uh, the, we're pretty confident we can raise the money to, to, uh, you know, put it back on track. We have some, institution and large shareholders who are still supporting us and told us that if we, the day we get it back, you know, they're there and they're ready to move forward because there's not the, so many uh, uh, advanced uh, copper projects in which you can invest. And this one is appealing. So it's, uh, uh, despite the market conditions, we're pretty confident we can get some money to get going and uh, finalize the feasibility study. Right. Okay. So I, I guess we'll sit and wait uh, to see where you get to with that. In the meantime, I think you've done something which I kind of hoped you would. It's um, which is not take your eye off the ball in Namibia, where I'm going to be uh, from next week. Um, we, we're going to meet a few um, people from uh, the, the the ministry ourselves, get a get a, a sense of what it's like to do business in country because I, I hear it's it's typically a good experience. Um, You've gone and picked up some licenses or options, or some, some, some licenses in Zambia. Uh, why have you done that? What have you picked up? What do you hope to be able to do there? Okay, the, f the first thing is, uh, yes, the main priority is still to get back our rights on, uh, on the project uh, Hybe in Namibia. It's very important. But uh, the experience shows us that being a one project company could be uh, uh, tricky sometime. You know, it's like uh, it's better to have more than one asset. The other thing is that we are an exploration and development company. We're not a company that is only there to fight to get our rights back. We need to give some added value to our shareholders and we need to develop projects. We have a very strong team in that part of the world. So it's, uh, that's why we, uh, we've looked at projects all around the world, in Canada and United States, uh, South America. And, uh, and we, we, we got back to, uh, to Zambia because it's near Namibia. It's near South Africa. It's our turf. That's where we are comfortable to operate. We know the geology. We know the people. We know how they, uh, they act and how they behave. So... Uh, and Zambia has made a, a very serious turnaround uh, uh, since the last election in September. It's, uh, you know, it's really come back as a mining friendly jurisdiction. It's uh, the president of the country said that uh, I think now they're producing 800 million tons. They want to be at 3 billion tons. So uh, it's a very, <laughs> a very uh, uh, big challenge. But at least, you know, there will be support to companies uh, to develop project. And the other thing is that we still have some cash. It's, it's not an issue on that side, but we didn't want to have a, a project where we have to spend all of our cash in the next three months. And then if we don't hit the, 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 the pay dirt, then it's over. <laughs> it's, uh, so we prefer to have a project projects that are less advanced, costing less, and that we can start putting together very good exploration program. And the last point, which is the most important one, these licenses are extremely, extremely well situated, right in the art of the Copper Belt, seven kilometers from Lubambe and Concola, two of the largest mines, uh, uh, copper mines in, uh, in Zambia. Another one is uh, about 20 kilometers from Luantia, uh, showing very interesting anomalies. So we're right in the, you know, we're elephant hunters and we're right in elephant territories. It's uh, if you want to find big deposit, large grade, very high grade, that's the place to be. Right. OK, I, I understood. And, and, and we, we know some of the, the players in country. You haven't spent a lot of money picking it up, which, which is good. Um, and I think in the press release, it kind of outlines the the terms of, of the earning um, there. But yeah, you referenced the, the money. You've got enough money now. How, how do you play the rest of this year? I mean, obviously a big part of it is waiting for the decision 
in Namibia. Okay, I understand that, and that could be that's a step change if it if it goes your way. If it doesn't, and you have to focus on Zambia, um, what are you going to be able to do before you need to go back to market in terms of Im improving the the story around these assets or or being able to you know talk through a narrative that people can buy into? I mean, how much money have you got? What would what could you do with it? Uh, we have about 1.5 million Canadians still in cash, and we plan to spend about 500,000 on the uh, Zambian property and doing mostly soil sampling, a lot of soil sampling, because we have identified many anomalies, but we need to, let's say, define those better. And uh, the soil sampling that were being done in the past, we were not completely satisfied of the, uh, 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 let's say, the way it has been taken or so and where it has been analyzed so we want to redo that and we want to go uh, uh, establishing drilling targets worst come to worst we could probably add another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to drill a couple of holes to see you know to test some areas we have enough money to do that so by the end of the year we should start developing uh, some some very interesting targets on on these projects right okay and when, when are you updating your powerpoint because there's this it, it needs to be updated. I think there's a lot of good things that have happened. Um, and obviously the, this acquisition, but you know, we, we need to understand the story a little bit better. Yeah. We will have a PowerPoint on the website, uh, mid next, mid, mid this week. It's on the, it's, it's being prepared now. The thing is that the, 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 uh, the uh, acquisition has not been finally approved by the stock exchange yet, but we're near of that. They finally find their, send their, uh, Conditional letter of approval last Friday, so now we can move forward toward an eventual closing, probably in the next two, three weeks maximum. So, uh, and then we can start really promoting it. Okay, and and with regards to the board, and I know you you basically um, in February you know reelected the director, most nearly all of the directors. I mean, what what's the appetite there because you know everyone's got other stuff that's going on as well um you, you the zambia thing i think may breathe a bit of fresh air into the into the story which is great and the, you know there's been a lot of effort with regards to lawyers and so forth in in, in namibia but and are there, are there any other things that are coming down the line to you know kind of reinvigorate this story which is you know it has been a little bit exhausted by by um the kind of legal process so any new ideas coming down the line you mean in terms of acquisition or in terms of uh... a acquisition fundraising a just ways of just engaging with namibian uh ministry of mines that sort of thing there, there's a certain number of things happening on behind the scene first because we're still yeah, we still have a very strong network in uh, in Namibia. Our chairman is Namibian. One of our directors is also a prominent Namibian. So there's still a lot of uh, discussion behind the scene, trying to find ways to resolve that situation. Uh, that could turn out one day to be that we sit together and we, you know, find a, an out of court settlement. Uh, that's the best, probably the best way to resolve that issue. Uh, so that is ongoing. We have not stopped that. And uh, uh, the uh, so we do everything we can to to force, let's say, a, a settlement of that situation. Out of the court, there's other things happening. Uh, concerning other financing, when we announce the uh, Zambian project, when it's uh, it's in it's in when when I say when we announce when we announce the closing of the. The project. Then we will look because we had some people proposing some financing, but our market cap is pretty low at the moment. So we're not in an emergency to raise money immediately. Depending where our market cap will be, maybe we will raise a little bit of money after the closing, maybe not. It depends on the market cap. And uh, uh, we don't need to do it immediately, but you know, it's if, uh, if the price is right, it's always better to have a little bit more cash than less. <laughs> so that's one thing. And uh, in Zambia, because of what we've done recently, the move we've done recently makes that it's possible we can acquire on similar terms, some other ground very nearby of, of, of the, uh, the uh, uh, license that we have at the moment. So we're pretty active on that side too. It's uh, it it could turn out that we we would like to increase the uh, the size of the uh, 
the size of the uh, the assets we have in the area. We have already had some discussion with majors uh, since we announced that. It's not even closed yet, and some majors have knocked to our door and say uh, they want to understand what we, in we intend to do with these. Uh, they, they, they have not made any proposal yet, but you see that there's some appetite. Okay, so that's why we want to increase the size. Well, I, I, yeah, I would, I would have thought so. I mean, the, the copper market, obviously, since even since we last spoke, it was around for about 460 uh, today, um, is suggests that there's a lot of obviously need for copper out there. There's also the desire to find big projects of scale, uh, which, are, is, which doesn't seem to be happening um, very much at all. We've seen problems in South America across the board, um, in, in, uh, Chile and Argentina and even Brazil and places and some of its pockets, but nevertheless, it doesn't it doesn't read well or scan well. Where do you think Africa is sitting in the mix here? Obviously, you'd normally be down in in Daba, but what what are you hearing out there? Africa is turning around quite interestingly. There's quite a lot of new developments in Namibia, in Botswana, in Zambia. We see Zimbabwe slowly getting back on track. It's uh, uh, so I, I think. And I'm not the only one thinking like this. It's it's Africa as as is you know the future is there for Africa, and there's more and more investors that are opening their eyes to Africa because you know there's problem all over the place in the world. There's not only problems in Africa. So now we know how to deal with problems in Africa. So we're there and we deal with problems in Africa. But we see the same type of stuff in Peru and in Chile. We see uh, Ecuador and. Uh, which are all considered, you know, good mining jurisdiction, but they, are, they have their problem. Even in Canada and British Columbia, it's extremely difficult to start a mine there. So it's, uh, that's part of our business. So now Africa is probably the place on the planet that has the most important unexplored, underexplored resources covering all commodities. It's crazy what you can find there. And uh, you just look at the copper uh, projects in Zambia. It's humongous. There's big, big mines. You look at the uh, Kamoa project of uh, 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 the, the company of Friedland. Uh, the name, <laughs> the name will get back anyway. You know, it's it's a huge project with with grades over three percent. You know, you have grades over three percent copper in uh, in Zambia everywhere. It's uh, so tonnage is there, the uh, the uh, the uh, grades is there, so you have everything to do to find good projects, and for the political situation. But we have to cope with that. It's uh, it's like this everywhere in the in the world. It's not new. So I think Africa has a bright future. Yeah, yeah. Ivanhoe, maybe is that the name of the company you're thinking of? Maybe which Ivanhoe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's there it. You go. Right. Sorry. There you go. Um, <laughs> no, no, I think, I think the, other, the... the other interesting thing that seems to be happening down here in Daba is um, the funds are here. The funds are here. The the the, the big boys are here. The the, the tier one companies are here. Um, and they got the checkbooks ready. It seems to me. Certainly, the conversations we've been having, they're they're desperate to find you know either either kind of backfill their. Um, their reserves or looking for the next big um, project. And, and, and there have been some deals across multiple um, commodities, but hasn't yet sort of dropped down to benefit the, the, the you know, explorers. But I, I, I kind of I sense um, that's coming. Um, but look, um, look, appreciate you uh, catching up. I'm sorry I couldn't catch up with you here. I uh, hope um, that your, your medical procedure goes well. Um, we will speak to you soon, especially if we, if you hear something back from the Ministry of Mines and Energy of Namibia. Yeah. Yep. Appreciate your time. Certainly. Good. You have a good time in Cape Town.